Hi guys, um, welcome to the family meeting. Today we'll be dealing with market structure and let us write down the following things that we'll be busy with. Um, in this session, we will be dealing with um, market structure. Um, we fuse it with the entries that are inside the market. I know a lot of you guys are suffering from entries. So today you'll be learning how I enter the market. And also we're going to be talking about um, accumulation. Let me get set. Let me get set, guy. It's accumulation. <clears throat> and um, distribution. Right. These are the following things that we're going to be doing at the end of the session. You should know where the entries are. You should know how I identify the market structure that happens in the market. And you should know how um, to analyze at least like me a bit. So since this is our first session, our first stop would be, of course, market structure. So with market structure, this is what we are going to look for. Let me just write it down first. Structure. So with market structure, this is what's happening. The market forms the W, um, V, V, M, or an M, A, A, W, right, guys? So after forming this, let me just show you how it looks like. This is how you will find it in the market. It forms a W, V, V, M, then A, a then w right guys so when you're looking at this all together there's patterns that this uh, diagram has right let us have the patterns here and let us name them one of them is um we, we have a head and shoulder i'm sure everybody can recognize that there's a head and shoulder there Write it down. Those, these are the three patterns, guys. These are the three patterns I'm looking for because they're going to help you identify most of where the money is. Um, there's a W or an M, right? And number three, we would say that there is a V top. There is a V top or a V bottom. All right, guys. So let me show you all these structures that I've written here. Firstly, we're going to start with a head and shoulder. Identifying a head and shoulder is very simple. This is a head, this is a shoulder, this is a shoulder. If you're looking for it on a diagram, it would be the head, shoulder, and shoulder, right, guys? And then that's an M formation that's sitting here. On the top of the double top where you've got the two lines there on top, right? Um, you're going to put your horizontal line. It's not two lines, it's two touches actually. It's there and there, the double top. So down here, you also have lines that are touching, which is one, two, one, two, right? And then there's a neckline right there. So when we, when I analyze, or so when we analyze, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at the W formations that are in the market, or we're going to look for the consolidations that are in the market. Then we're going to put our two lines in between the consolidations or where there's a neckline or the double, uh, the W where it's formed or an M where it's formed, right? So, um, that's how we recognize a head and shoulder W and M formation. I've talked about it. Head and shoulder has a V top, right? And then the inverse one has a V bottom because it will be looking like this, right, guys? So W's and M's are reversal patterns, right, guys? So if you have entered the market somewhere here and it pushes and it starts creating an M, you know it's time for you to exit. Well, that's the first point, all right? And if you're trading a head and shoulder, right, guys, this one is out. If you're trading a head and shoulder, guys, this is the head, this is the shoulder and shoulder, right? Let me just make things easier and wrap some of the, some of the things that are sitting there. Um, when you are trading a head and shoulder, you realize that when you enter here, right, guys, this is your first take profit. And the first TP is very important, right, guys? Why? Because after an M, the market could easily reject and go up and form a market structure that is actually looking downwards like that. Not the traditional one that has a W and it shoots and goes all the way up, right, guys? So after putting horizontal lines there, you might enter there or you might enter there, but the first exit will be because of this here, 
That's why the market is reacting right over there. And that's the first take profit, right? And if the market creates a shoulder, guys, I hardly trade shoulders. This is where my money is, under the, the shoulders, right? So under the neckline of that carriage shoulders, that is combined is where the push is. I'll show you an example when we go to the market and that's where I trade. So after learning all of this here, let us go find the market structure and continue dealing with the market structure with a live chat. Because if I don't teach on a live chat, you guys would just take me as a bluffing mentor. There we go. We have a chat right there. Um, let me make it smaller and then let's do this, right? Just before before we go anyway, there's a market structure right there, but I'm not going to use this with pay to analyze, right? But there's a market structure right there. It finished up the structure and then it created a W. After this W, the market went up. This is another W on the market that went all the way down, but it had some retests from the W. So that's a market structure. And I want to show you how to enter this market structure and how to pick it up from a distance that this thing is forming a market structure. This is a one hour time frame that we are using. Maybe I should use this one, right guys? Let me start here. Let me start here where the market rejected, right? With our entries, this is what we do. When the market has created a W, right? Let me just draw it here again. W. We know that it's going to break out, retest, and go all the way up. But this one was different, right? It broke out. Next candlestick, it gave us an entry. That means for the first hour, the market broke out. The second hour, the market gave you an entry to buy. Like even here, when you put your line like this, and another one is like this, right? The market broke out. Went back in, gave you the sell. Next candlestick was a sell. That's your entry. Until where? Until this point here. But the market went inside of this that had a consolidation. That's why we have consolidations there. But guys, this is not the pay I want to use to teach you. I want to use the most famous pay that everybody is afraid of and they don't want to trade so much, right? This is your B75, our loved one our sister, our brother, our everything, right? So as the week starts, you need to go on the weekly time frame and analyze it from the weekly, right? But because now the week has started already, I'm going to start on a daily time frame, right? Um, we go on a daily time frame. I'm going to mark all the points that are going to lead us to the right direction over where are we going to analyze and then what gives us analysis, Um confirmation so i'm going to use this point here which has a v top this one had a v top also this one had a v bottom right guys i'm going to use this point up until this point and up until where it is at the moment right we want to know what drives this to go down like that and struggle down there and go up as you are looking at it right let us just um start where i had i'll highlight it so we can pick out the market structure. We're just going to, to put a, a vertical, vertical line, a rectangle, I mean, not a vertical line. Oh, guys, let's put a rectangle here on top, right? Because now that's where the market has left evidence and what's happening. So there's this candlestick that's in the middle. You have learned about candlesticks. I'm not going to name it, but I know most of you guys have learned about candlesticks in the beginning. So this candlestick, this candlestick in the middle has a name, right? It might be a spinning top, or it might be a hammer, or it might be whatever that idea that you have learned on the, the other class, but I won't tell you. You need to know it while you're looking at it. So... When we look at that candlestick, we understand that that candlestick was forming price action, right? It was forming something to tell you that the market is about to change direction or the candlestick that comes next is about to change the, the direction, right? This is a daily time frame. So you can imagine that candlestick while it was going up and down, it was forming something. So we want to go on smaller time frames and see what that candlestick was forming after 
after it did all of those, right, then there was this candlestick of a cell. So we want to see that what is this place creating all together before we enter the market, right? Let us clear the chart and then we highlight those places. And then we go to a four hour time frame to see what the market has in store for us. Then we look for that place we have highlighted up there. Oh, to our surprise, the market has created an M. Can you see that this is an M? So I said when the market creates a double top or a double bottom, this is what you do. You need to put your two horizontal lines, right? That is your neckline right there. So when you have put your two horizontal lines, what you learn is that the market has broken out of there, right? The next candlestick, it gave you a buy. The next one gave you a sell. So when 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 you sell with the next one, right? Even if you didn't enter with the next one, you entered with this one because that's what confirmed the sell. Where is your first take profit? Your take profit has to be there. Remember what we did on the other um, side when I drew all of this. This is the take profit, right? Okay, then after taking profit or before taking profit, let us talk about what happened here, right? Because now when I enter trades, right? I like, telling, I like telling you guys that, you know what? You have to wait for the consolidation right after consolidation that is where your money is so after putting your two lines there you wait for the market to break out and this candlestick it gives you a sell then you sell the market but this time after the m the market gave you a retest so let us do this let us put in um an, another rectangle there to see what the market was creating there right we're going to put a different color we're going to use that one there and let us use a different color for this one because it's a retest, right? Uh, what's your favorite color? Probably let me use pink. I'm a girl girl. It's magenta. Okay, it looks pink. No, but it's still the very same color, guys. Okay, let me just change it to um, yellow, maybe. Yes, yellow works. So we change it to yellow. And then we go to the one hour time frame. So what you should learn with also my test right is that the bigger time frame, they give you the direction of where the market is going. But the smaller time frames like your one hour, four hour, 30 minutes, 50 minutes should be having the right market structure to actually make, give you entries, exits and all that, right? So we come to one hour because now we've learned that it was creating a double top on a four hour time frame. Now we come to one hour. We want to see what is it that it was creating on the other side. Oh my word. Oh my gosh. Uh, guys, this market does just it want to go to the right direction. Okay. There we are, right? So this is the big M that we we're seeing on a four-hour time frame. But on a one-hour time frame, it has created structures that are happening in this, right? And after creating the structure, I highlighted this place just for us to see that what was the market doing, All right? So when we highlight that place, we realize that, okay, the market was retesting. Where was it retesting? Now you adjust the lines. You adjust the lines because now this is where it was literally retesting. That's where your neckline is, right? On a four hour time frame, well, it doesn't look like that. That's why we go to small, smaller time frames to see what's exactly happening. So that place you realize that the market was just retesting. Depending on which institution you're learning from, but that can just be, I call it a pin bar, but some people call it a hammer. Right, guys? So a hammer on a delicate situation or on a, on a delicate um, um, zone, it gives you entries, right? Because if a hammer is created or a pin bar, it means that the market is going down. After that hammer was created on that um, retest, the next candlestick that it gave us was a sell candlestick. So that's where our entry is. That's how you enter the market. Like even look at this one. If we're using this point here, we're going to put a line there, another one there. This breaks out. The next candlestick gives us a buy. Simple, right, guys? Even on this, I've given that one. Okay, this one we have used. 
on a bigger time frame. But then that's how the market moves. So um, let's go get another one. Let's go get another one. So we have to move on. Since we used that point up there, I need to get to the point of where I'm going. So let's go back to the four hour time frame. We seen that this market was uh, retesting and then it was shooting down. Then we understand that after take profit, what did the market do? It created all these shoulders. So we understand that this is a head, this is a shoulder, that's a shoulder. And I said, anything under the shoulders, that's where the money is. Look at how this candlestick brought out. This one gave you an entry. And the market created a W only here. Right, And it's still down there trying to create something that shows up that the market can go up. But you took your exit here, right? Because now the market was threatening you right there. And then that's a complete structure of market structure, right? It's impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse. So it has finished. When you're looking at it, it's an M, then it's an A, it's an A, then it forms a W. That means you need to exit there. And even after forming the W, can you see what happened? It gave an entry for a buy with this one. For it to be rejected right there, it's because of this situation that happened here. That's why the market got rejected, right? But it still went all the way up until this point here. Okay, but we want to know, how does this come about? The... Um, the consolidation day. And then we go to a bigger time frame. When we get to a bigger time frame, we understand that this thing created a spinning top right here. Right? Because now after creating this, let's go to a smaller time frame and see what is that exactly. It is down there. We see that it is a consolidation in the market. That's how the market has created, has, has created an entry, right? So what do we learn from this? We learn that the bigger time frames with zones that are very important, if they create price action or candlesticks that we know, they actually change the direction of, of the market. When we go to smaller time frames, it is where the structure now is being created, right? Because it's it's not every day that you get on a daily time frame and you find a structure that is being created. You can find structures on also smaller time frames. So okay, enough with me using volatility 75, right? Let us go to another page. Let us go to another P and let us continue with this market structure. Or oh, before we continue, let me just teach you something called accumulation and distribution, right, guys? Uh, accumulation and distribution. It's called the white of strategy. Before we go there, it's called the white of strategy, but I call it accumulation and distribution. So we did market structure. We did the head and shoulder, you saw it. We did the V top, V bottom, you saw it. So now I gave you entries also, but now I didn't give you accumulation and distribution. Accumulation and distribution. Right? So I'm going to explain it in a drawing, which it's like this, the market crease does this and it goes up, reaches goes up and creates something like this. And then goes down, retest, goes down, maybe create a head and shoulder and go all the way up. So it's a process, right, guys? We understand that down here is what we call accumulation. And then up there is what we call distribution, right, guys? Um, if up there is distribution and down there is accumulation, now we need to make sense out of it, right? Um, let me explain it in a forex way. In a forex way, this is how I'm going to put it. Let us say the I store is selling 20 make books at a price of $300 and I buy them in bulk, right? If it's 20 of them and I buy them $300 each, that means I've took everything that a customer could have ever had, right? And then customers come and they complain like, we want those laptops, they're in demand now. If I decide to sell them, I tell that, I tell iMac that, you know what, I'm selling the uh, laptops with 500 um, USD. They're going to buy them because they're in demand and they want to sell them to customers which can pay more. So that means in this process, I bought them low and I sold them high. 
so the money makes sense. But let me explain the process, right? We know that we have got different time zones, but I'm going to use South African time zones, right? At 2 a.m., we understand that it's Asian time at 2 a.m. So at 2 a.m. at Asian time, mostly maybe the market when it's unconsolidated, it might break out of the market, right? Come back to retest and then um, London time hits and the market goes up, right? And then London day break, it goes, then half past two, then we are trading in between sessions and half past three hits. When half past three hits, the market would have created this W here, right? When half past three hits, it, the market shoots and goes all the way down. Half past three, we know that it is New York, right? So in between here, it will be a London day break. But we understand that when New York, when New York session hits, it blows your account in order to pick up here from the uh, from the accumulation to go back to distribution. That's how you should know this, these stages that happen in the market, accumulation and distribution, guys. You can Google them. They are there on the internet if you don't understand me. And then I, I quite have like a couple of pictures that show you the drawing. There's one. So you learn that this is market structure, guys, right? Because how do you how do you learn that this is market structure? You understand that this thing has created an M and then it broke up. So I've spoken, I've spoken about the M's that I created in the market, but do not follow. This is a W, but it broke down. Right? Okay, maybe this is just a raw picture. Maybe this one is just a raw picture. Let me get a picture that will actually have. Uh, more explanation over this wipe off or accumulation and distribution. There's an M that was created and there's the market going up. W, the market coming back down. So you can go on Google and understand this, but there's there's accumulation and distribution I want to show you using NASDAQ pairs. Like, guys, market structure happens everywhere. If you feel like indices, they don't have market structure, you should come speak to me. I'll show you where the structures are. I'm glad that you are in my class that you're learning structures. We'll be done in 10 minutes, guys. Um, let me just extend 10, 10 minutes so that I can show you other forms of um, market structure. I also don't want to take too much time explaining because at the end of the day, we learn differently. Okay, we are still here. It's a four-hour time frame, and we are picking up market structure. I don't know if you guys are not picking up this market structure with me, right? But I'm going to circle all the important places I want you to see when I say uh, market structure plays a role, right? This is how it is. This here, that day, and that day, we're going to solve them, right? Let's start here. So the market created this, created an M, went down, and then it went all the way up. We understand that this was double bottom. It wasn't really a matter of double top. So this is a W. This W is seated like this, W, M, W, right? And then it rejected. So you understand that it has reached this. It has, it has treated that as um, the tops, the double tops, because they're longer. And then this one is just sitting here. We thought the market was going to go down and then it shoot all the way down. But hey, it created the zones in order for it to go all the way up until the market was um, taken down there. Easy. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, sorry about that. But before we were interrupted, um, I was talking about these structures that I created. They, they look alike, right? Whatever happened here went up, created a W, went down, created another one, went up, right? So what we understand is that this is my case structure. Because even after creating this double bottom, it had to shoot up and also create all of these. It had to shoot down. That's market structure at its own. But let me show you how NASDAQ moves most of the time, right? NASDAQ creates a consolidation here, comes back and retests the consolidation and breaks up. There's a consolidation there, retesting that, breaks up. There's a consolidation there, retesting that, breaks up. 
as we can see at the retest, and I've even marked this once, testing the, it showed up, it tested this one. And then it showed up, tested that one, it showed up, came back to test at least this one, right? And then it went all the way up. It, it started having these movements and not retesting until it came back to retest which one, that one, now it's up there. So every time that NASDAQ moves, it creates price action because it's creating new highs. So it needs to leave evidence behind. When you trade NASDAQ, be aware of accumulation and distribution, and then also be aware of the times that you're trading NASDAQ with, right? Even currency pairs, guys, let's go to GBP. GBP has a lot of uh, information that could be used to our gain, right? Let's go to GBP USD. Um, let's let's go to recent events that have happened, right? We understand that this is distribution, guys. And then the market came here. Look at it, creating a W on a bigger time frame, right? The market came here. I want to deal with this, come back, deal with this, come back, deal with that, right? But I'm gonna deal with this because now it's similar to that one. Let us go to a daily time frame. A daily time frame, we understand that the market had this also had that right guys don't mind my chat my chat is so so messy don't mind my chat don't do what i did there but what i was trying to explain to you guys is look at this look at this point that happened here and also mind this point that happened there look at how the candlesticks look alike right and the market went up so as the market was going up from there i needed to see if the market had left any evidence to show me that hey stacy it's time to go up we go to four hour on four hour we understand that the market had created that consolidation then when we see a consolidation what do we do we put our two horizontal lines there this one broke out this candlestick gave you a buy until that point where it's first take profit see very very up to the point even with this consolidation here it is the very same thing you're going to pick up it is the very same thing you're going to pick up consolidation breakup next candlestick well didn't necessarily give you a buy but it gave you a buy until that point right there and then we test even with this one it was the mostly the very same thing it consolidates it gives you entries okay maybe we want to see what happened here with one hour right let us go to one hour let us go to one hour and see what what was the market creating there on on one hour we understand that the market had an m guys remember with our traditional uh market structure the market creates a w v v m right but this time it created an m and it went up v v that's what it created here that's where your lines are this candlestick broke out next one gave you an entry there's our first take profit and then we are good you are good but then the market came and created a head and shoulder also so where was 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 the market going it either was going there or it was going there so he had two take profits that were put in line after that head and shoulder had been created Okay, guys, um, this would be the end of my session. So concerning market structure, if you don't understand anything, we're going to have a question and answer, and we're going to have a practice run, and then that's where I will see you. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you understand the things that we have discussed, which are entries and exits, which are the M's, the W's, the head and shoulder, the V top and the V the bottom, and also you understood that the daily time frame plays a role in a four hour and one hour. When you understand all of those, I infuse them together. You'll understand market structure and the entries that happen in the market.